Welcome to this week's Crypto Roundup. In today's recap, we're covering Wormhole's massive $2.4 billion airdrop, the Ethereum community's debate over a proposed change to its monetary policy, Binance's defense of its detained compliance chief in Nigeria, Ripple's plans to unveil a USD peg stablecoin, a technical glitch freezing $24 million in Seoul on Lido's staking protocol, venture capital firms signaling a bull market with new crypto funds, Jupiter tokens all-time high amid governance vote controversy, the DOJ's wallet transaction to Coinbase Prime, record revenues for Bitcoin miners before the upcoming halving event, and the FTX estate's repayment plan set for the end of 2024. Thanks for tuning in to the Weekly News Recap, written by Juan Aronovich and edited by Jacob Oliver. I'm Megan Christensen. Let's dive right in. On Wednesday, Wormhole completed its much-anticipated airdrop, distributing 1.1 billion W tokens to early adopters of the cross-chain protocol. Following the airdrop, the token began trading at around 160. However, the price experienced a swift decline during price discovery before settling at around 140. With the token's rebound, Wormhole's market cap grew to approximately $2.4 billion. The Wormhole rewarded users from several blockchains, including all major EVM-based chains, such as SWE, Osmosis, Injective, and even the defunct Terra. The W token was only claimable on the Solana blockchain, which suffered some congestion issues as users reported failed transactions. The Ethereum community was at a crossroads this week, with a proposal to adjust its token issuance model sparking widespread debate. As staking on Ethereum grows, researchers Ansgar Dietrichs and Casper Schwartz-Schilling suggest revising the monetary policy to mitigate potential negative impacts, like inflation for non-stakers and increased centralization. Their proposal aims to balance the staking ratio, but it has met with resistance from some parts of the Ethereum community. Critics argue that altering Ethereum's foundational economics could compromise its integrity and deter institutional investors. With the staking rate rising, 31 million ETH are currently staked. Concerns about Ethereum's future and its currency's role are intensifying. The proposal supporters believe it's a necessary step to ensure Ethereum's longevity, while detractors see it as a threat to the network's principles and market stability. On Wednesday, Binance issued a public statement defending Tigran Gambarian, its head of financial crime compliance, who is currently detained in Nigeria on suspicion of committing several financial crimes in connection with the exchange. Binance emphasized that Gambarian lacks decision-making authority within the company and should not be held accountable for company decisions. Nigerian authorities arrested Gambarian and Nadim Anjawala, Binance's regional manager for Africa, in February, subsequently accusing both executives and Binance of tax evasion, money laundering, and operating without a license. They were set to be arraigned in the country's federal high court on April 4th, but that has been postponed until April 19th. Gimbarian and Andrewala have both sued the Nigerian government for human rights violations. Gimbarian remains in custody. However, Andrewala managed to escape detainment and leave the country in March. His whereabouts are unknown. On April 4th, Ripple announced its intent to release a U.S. dollar peg stablecoin, aimed at serving enterprise clients and payment companies. This new stablecoin, expected to launch later this year, will be supported by USD deposits, short-term U.S. treasuries, and similar assets, with regular audits by an independent accounting firm. Ripple President Monica Long emphasized the stablecoin's potential to facilitate institutional and decentralized finance applications across the XRP ledger and Ethereum ecosystems. An operational hiccup and Lido's smart contracts on the Solana blockchain has locked in approximately 24 million of Sol, preventing users from withdrawing their stake tokens. The issue, detailed by Pavel Pavlov, a product manager at P2P, the entity managing Lido on Solana, stems from a flawed smart contract function that complicates the withdrawal process. Pavlov highlighted the problem in a Lido Discord channel post on March 30th, stating, quote, the current implementation uses the split function in the withdrawal process of the smart contract, which is quite significant in terms of complexity and time to amend, end quote. He further mentioned that the technical team is planning to coordinate with Lido Dow to discuss potential issues and timelines for resolving the issue. This setback follows Lido's decision to discontinue its protocol on the Solana blockchain in October, 
after a vote by the community. Although users were given a deadline of February 4, 2024, to unstake their assets, the recent discovery has made the process exceedingly difficult, especially for those unfamiliar with the protocol's command line interface. A post by Jay, a member of the Liquid Staking Protocol, Sanctum, conveyed the frustration of users dealing with the CLI's complexities and reported malfunctions. Jay also pointed out that while Sanctum offers an alternative on staking service with minimal loss, this option has not been adequately communicated to Lido's users. Crypto venture capital firms are making bold moves to raise substantial funds, signaling expectations for a prolonged bull market. Paradigm, a leading venture capital firm, is seeking to raise between $750 and $850 million for a new fund, according to Bloomberg. This effort, aiming for the industry's largest raise post-crypto winter, underscores a rejuvenated interest in cryptocurrency investments. Similarly, Galaxy Digital has plans to launch a $100 million venture fund targeting early-stage crypto companies. This marks a strategic shift for Galaxy, which previously invested its own capital and is now expanding to include external investors. The fund, named Galaxy Ventures Fund 1 LP, aims to invest in over 30 startups over three years, focusing on financial applications, software infrastructure, and crypto protocols. These initiatives arrive amid a burgeoning crypto market, further evidenced by a 52.5% month-over-month surge in VC funding for crypto projects in March. Jupiter's governance token, JUP, achieved a new all-time high on Sunday, reaching $1.92 in the midst of a governance vote to allocate 4.5 million JUP tokens to its core working group. The decision has sparked mixed reactions within the community, with 75% voting in favor despite some expressing strong disapproval on forums and social media. The allocated funds aim to support Jupiter's core working group's efforts to advance the decentralized finance within the Solana ecosystem. The decision has led to concerns about the size of the allocation and its impact on the project's future, with critics arguing the allocation is excessive without clear performance indicators or accountability, suggesting it could risk the project's success. A crypto wallet belonging to the U.S. DOJ that holds approximately $2 billion in Bitcoin seized from Silk Road executed a transaction to Coinbase Prime on April 2nd. The wallet transferred 0.001 BTC, signaling that it might have been a test transaction. Soon after, an additional 1,999.999 BTC, valued at $131.27 million, was moved to Coinbase Prime's hot wallet. The sequence of transactions, initially for a small amount and then significantly larger, suggests that the DOJ may be testing the waters before potentially liquidating or moving large sums of Bitcoin tied to the now defunct dark web marketplace Silk Road. Bitcoin mining operations hit a new revenue peak, garnering $2 billion in March, setting a record just weeks before the anticipated halving event that is expected to slash their earnings. This significant milestone surpasses the previous high of $1.74 billion in May 2021. The substantial revenue includes $85.81 million from transaction fees and $1.93 billion from block rewards. Foundry USA led the charge, mining 1,300 blocks, or 29.4% of the total, followed by Ampool and other notable mining pools. The upcoming halving will reduce the reward from 6.25 Bitcoin to 3.125 Bitcoin per block, potentially halving miners' profits unless Bitcoin's value increases markedly. This adjustment occurs amid a backdrop where spot Bitcoin ETFs have dramatically increased demand, purchasing 66,008 Bitcoin in March, far outpacing the 25,513 Bitcoin mined. The shift in supply and demand dynamics hints at a possibly different outcome post having than in previous cycles. The FTX bankruptcy estate has outlined plans to initiate repayments to creditors by late 2024, following an agreement between the Chapter 11 Bankruptcy Court in Delaware and the official liquidation proceedings in the Bahamas. This decision comes after acknowledging the complex situation due to FTX's accounting issues, with efforts to ensure no creditor receives less than they are due. Both legal entities have expressed a, quote, shared goal to distribute initial funds to verified creditors by year-end. Creditors have been invited to submit their claims through FTX's portal, initially set for closure on May 15th, though recent updates suggest an extension to June 2024. 
This process marks a significant step towards resolving the financial chaos surrounding FTX, providing a path for reimbursing those affected by its downfall. If you enjoyed this recap, go to unchainedcrypto.substack.com. That is unchainedcrypto.substack.com and sign up for our free newsletter so that you can stay up to date with the latest in crypto. Unchained is produced by Laura Shin with help from Nelson Wang, Matt Pilchard, Juan Aronovich, Megan Gavis, Shashank, and Margaret Correa. Thanks for listening. Unchained is now a part of the Coindesk Podcast Network. For the latest in digital assets, check out Markets Daily, five days a week, with host Noel Atchison. Follow the Coindesk Podcast Network for some of the best shows in crypto.